Hi everybody, welcome, welcome back, or just plain welcome if you're brand new to uh, Jimmy's Neighborhood Bees. I'm Jimmy, so uh, welcome to my neighborhood. Um, today, I'm just going to tell you, show you uh, what's going on. The weather finally broke. The past, though, I don't know, four, five, six days, whatever it was, our temperatures have been below freezing the whole time. Uh, the highs were below freezing. Um, which I guess most of the East Coast and the Midwest was the same. We just didn't get the snow. We got a, a, a one inch of snow and it stayed on the ground for about two days because it didn't get above freezing. Uh, however, today it's about 52 degrees Fahrenheit. I'll put Celsius right here as usual. And um, uh, however, it's overcast and it's going to be raining. It's been raining off and on. So the bees will come out. I'm going to show you the front of the, the hives just to show you that one there's activity, the other one there's not. So, But the bees are alive in both. But let me read the uh, fortune for today. Uh, let's see. Your lost item will be found next week. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll see. Uh, it might be Sharon. She's, she's not here. <laughs> Sharon's in California, but she'll be back Friday. So... Uh, but that's not next week, but I did lose something and I've been looking for For the past oh, I don't know week. So maybe next week. I'll find it because I've been looking for it. Anyway um, I'm gonna I took yesterday. I came out here to the bee shed opened up the freezer I took three frames out of I had medium frames that had some nectar honey pollen that been in the freezer since last year um, I'm gonna put them out for open feeding because the next four to five days we're gonna get in the mid 50s the 60s and possibly low 70s by Friday chances of rain off and on so the bees will be doing cleansing flights they'll be going to my feeding station uh, checking out to see if anything is out there so I usually put something out there for them um, when they fly because they have nothing else to do they're not gonna find anything out here uh, you know so I just open feed these these frames I'm not gonna be using medium frames in my apiary so I'll just open feed these get rid of those frames uh, or at least get them out of the inventory um, and then uh, yeah cuz I'll be using all deeps so um, and, and of course for my, uh, my XL for my brood chambers, we'll be using these XL frames, but of course, no, I didn't break it. Okay. I didn't break it. Uh, anyway, oh, it's 57 degrees. No need for, no need for the fire right now. Anyway. Um, yeah, I'll be using deep, deep frames for my, uh, honey supers. So. And whether that's the uh, the flow frames, the deep, you know, their flow, uh, whether it's the uh, Ross Round Deeps that I use, um, like here, I have, I am just doing a horrible job, but I have Ross Rounds, this one I got to refix it, came out, but I'll fix it. And I also went uh, at the uh, Honey Bee Festival, not Honey Bee Festival, that's ours. At the uh, Bee Expo, North American Honey Bee Expo, I bought these things. I can't remember what they're called. I'll look it up and I'll write it down at the bottom down here. But I brought two sets of these and that's to make, help make cut comb easier. It was a bear getting these things assembled, but I got two of them. So I'll I'll throw them in a in a frame in a hive somewhere, and uh, see what the bees do. Again, I'm just a backyard guy. I'm not in it for a a, a, a sideline. It's not a side hustle. I don't sell the honey. It, it's for it's just a hobby for me. So if they work, they work. If they don't, they won't. But we'll see what happens. I'll use those. I'll put those in. Like I said, flow frames. I got regular deeps. I'll be putting in these uh, P 
pink acorn frames. I'll, I'll wax them up, put a couple of these in, and I'll have some traditionally spun out honey. Uh, we'll see, see what happens. So anyway, let me take you outside and uh, have you look at the uh, landing boards of the yellow hive where there's activity and the uh, farmhouse where there's no activity. Then usually the farmhouse is a couple of hours behind the yellow hive because that box is, is much more insulated than the box of the uh, yellow the yellow bees right here, the storeroom bees. So they're usually an hour or two behind when it comes to flying out uh, once the weather breaks. So I've noticed that over the time I've had it, which is, you know, probably, you know, you might notice if you have a land hive that's insulated and a, a Langstroth hive that's not insulated, your Langstroth bees will probably get out earlier and quicker than your uh, land hive. Now, I don't have a land hive um, yet. I may get one just to have one and see what happens with it. But uh, then I might have to build some kind of a conversion something or another for me because I'm a little extra. You know, that's what I do. Anyway, I'll talk to y'all later. Let me get you outside. Let you check that out. I'm going to show you where I'm going to put my, um, my uh, feeder thing. I got my high butler that I put in the three frames in. I had them in the house overnight so that uh, the, the, the honey wouldn't be like ice cold straight from the freezer. So I had it in the house overnight. I keep and um, I pu I'll put it out up there where my feeding station is. The honey will be room temperature, you know. And then uh, this evening, I'll go back out, brush all the bees off if there were any bees on there, and then put the put the uh, hive butler with the three frames back in the house until tomorrow. And I'll repeat this all day, all week this week until I think Saturday's our last warm day. Then it starts to go back cold. And uh, whatever they don't steal or, or open feed, I'll put it back in the freezer until the next warm spell. So, oh yeah, and that's it. So let me, let's go out there and do all that. And then uh, we'll come back. Okay, here's my hive butler, and here's the three frames that I'm going to use to put it in my little feeding station. What this is, is on the side of my mechanical shed. Um, you can see mini parts because I keep my mini parts in here, spare rims, things like that. Uh, ain't they mechanicals in this shed? However, this is the opposite side of, of my yard, so the bees are on that side. I feed on this side. Hopefully, that will keep down any kind of robbing situation. Um, 
behind me you see the boat and my, my swarm trap is, is right over here too. Anyway, these are the three frames that I'm gonna put in here now. Uh, there was some nectar that they had stored and some, you can see some capped honey. So what I'm gonna do is, so that's one frame. Here's another with some more capped honey. It's kind of heavy too. This one, you can see it has pollen in there. I don't know if they're gonna get it, but it's been freezing since last season in the freezer. And the other one, again, full of nectar there, some capped honey on the ends, and pollen and nectar. So what I do, I'll put this up here. Now, since I'm, I'm transitioning from, from mediums to all deep frames, those mediums you saw me take, I'm not gonna use them. I'm gonna scrape any wax and re, you know, melt the wax down. Um, they've been out here all season, so, uh, cause that was the last time I had feeding, but this is the station. The Be Smart uh, thing here, I usually feed, uh, I'll put water in there or one-to-one or, uh, -one and, and do open feeding. That's what the rocks are in there for, so the bees don't drown. Uh, I also have another watering station here, which is the bee buffet. So, yeah, this is the station. So, anyway, let's go back inside and see what's going on. Okay, you got to see some of the activity outside. There was a few undertaker bees on the yellow hive, uh, getting bees out of there. So I didn't need to use the uh, the little scraper to that, uh, you know, we got. They gave us free scrapers. I didn't need to use it um, this time. However, if you notice, I use hive gates or hive gates on my both of the hives. The farmhouse has it and the yellow hive. And all my hives in the back that are waiting, they have them too. And this is just one spare. I need to order maybe two or three more. But with this, you can't, you know, you're somebody saying, you know, how are you going to clean bees? Well, you got to pull this out. And what I do is I just use the hook to hook it, to pull it out of the hive. Then I can either look in it or just swap it out with a clean one. But before I go back in, I clean the, hot, the, the bees out using a scraper. I've had I've had one of these, but I got two more because Sharon got one and I got one at Hive Expo. So thank you very much, Be Smart Designs. So uh, uh, yeah, these uh, I believe they are from, oh, BIQ Solutions. But I think, I think Better B sells them as well. But these are out of New Zealand and I'll be going to New Zealand um, next year or this year. Oh Lord, I'll be going to New Zealand in April. So uh, maybe I'll find out where they are and pick up some. <laughs> anyway, we'll, we'll talk more about that later. Uh, but anyway, um, all right, so that's what I do. I, I'll, I'll either pull it out and just replace it and then clean that one out and have it in hot standby as I always call these things. So, but I keep it on the shelf up here. I had it upside down. Anyway. Uh, what was I going to say next? Uh, you seen everything, you did everything outside. Yeah. So I am going to buy some more lumber to, uh, start building my new, uh, long hives, two of them. Um, I got some designs in my head. I got some changes in my head. Um, it's like, I, I always, I told my friend, you know, someone asked me about the, the farmhouse hive. Did I use some kind of program to get the, 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 the gabled ends and all that? And I said, no, I, I use CAD, which to me, you know, for me, it, 
it's cardboard aided design and what i did was and i still got it i i took a piece of cardboard and i just kind of held it up to the side of the box and when it looked right that's when i drew my lines i drew the center line lined it up and so that's how i designed the sides and then i just figured out how to make the roof that i wanted to make and using the materials so i kept my template but i don't think i'll make any of my hives the same so the next hive will be something different but that's what i do a car cardboard aided design cad program um anyway uh yeah that's it um uh as far as the hive gate, I like those entrances because the tunnel that the bees have to go through to get in, and then they, they kind of rate, uh, it's open right at the bottom of the middle of the, the, the hive, the, the, the frames. And I like that. I just wish it was a little bit wider. So maybe the next one, I'm gonna put two side by side and have them both open for summer and then figure a way to close it close off one of them for winter uh which shouldn't be hard i'll just put a plug maybe i'll just remove it and then put a plug in and that'll be the winter setup and then in the spring pull the plug put the other hive gate back in and we're rocking with two hive gates um, still enough for the bees to defend and uh the bees that live there know the bees that don't they get stuck trapped and they don't make it out. They might make it in, but they don't make it out. But yellow jackets even, they don't make it out either. Anyway, I'm rambling. I'm gonna quit rambling. I'm gonna get out of here, call it a day. Oh, I wanna thank Hilco for the hat. Hilco was giving away hats. They gave away a hive tool, like a combo hive tool. I have it in my other storage shed, um, cause I got a few in here. But, uh, and I, I brought one up to my daughter's house cause we had two. Uh, Sharon had one, I had one. So I want to thank them for that. And they were demonstrating their, their honey filling bottler thing. And every time they made a bottle, they gave it away of, of honey, you know. So I have a bottle of their honey, uh, which is kind of cool, you know. Even though I'm not in this for the honey. And, and, you know, but anyway. All right, I'm rambling. I'm going to quit rambling. Thank you guys for watching, subscribing, commenting. Sharon will be back Friday. I don't know when she'll be back on the channel, but uh, maybe we'll get her to go and look in, uh, look in the uh, farmhouse since it's safe when you open it. <laughs> so we'll see. But yeah, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, oh, speaking of that, real quick, real quick. Speaking of that, at my last bee club meeting here in Central Virginia, one of the members said last year, his first swarm happened on January 29th his first swarm January 29th he said his second swarm was two weeks later in February and he said he's got 12 hives is what he operates um, but he, he thought it was too early to check in January it was kind of warm I look back at my list at my notes it was kind of warm but that's early for us to be getting into the bees looking for uh, queen cells and whatever to, to determine if they're gonna you know already ready to swarm i would have never went in my hive this early in the season so i may have to crack the lids of my of my inner smart my uh smart inner covers the, the insulated inner covers just to take a peek to see if they're really brooding up or or if they're not i mean a, a few weeks ago they were bringing in pollen and so you know that kind of scared all of us in the club. So, uh, yeah, so it, it might be earlier this year. So definitely we'll get in by February. So stay tuned. We'll get into some bees. Not like the Louisiana guys. They're already in their bees. Uh, some of them, you know, checking things out, killing beetles, doing whatever. Uh, not us up here and not Brian in, in Ohio. We saw your snow. I feel for you. But uh, I guess we're getting close. All right, that's it. No more rambling. We get out of here. The music plan me out. Thank you all for watching and uh, enjoy other videos. Oh, and have fun with your bees.